What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. My guest this week is Jocelyn Nelson, class of 2015. Jocelyn's going to tell us everything about her time, how she got to Bethany, uh, maybe a stint of her own creation of a major, and what she's doing now. Uh, but without further ado, oh, and there's a, se there's a special surprise at the end of this episode, so make sure you stick around. But without further ado, Jocelyn Nelson, class of 2015. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. My guest this week is Jocelyn Nelson, class of 2015. Jocelyn, thank you for being with us. I can't pass you tea, but you live in Pittsburgh, so you can get yourself some Turner's tea. Um, <laughs> Jocelyn's going to talk about everything from how she got to Bethany, what she did at Bethany, how she, be, you know, how she became a comm major, what she liked or didn't like about the communications field. Uh, we'll take a break, come back. We'll talk about that big test that everybody had to take. Nobody enjoyed. Uh, we'll talk about that week as well and all the stuff that you do in that week. And then we will get into what this lady over here is doing now, which you, if you are in Pittsburgh, you've probably seen her on the morning on KDKA. So, spoiler alert, without further ado, Jocelyn, tell us your story. Hi, um, Jocelyn Nelson. Fun fact right off the bat, Bethany is the only college I put in an actual application to. So huh. I, I toured a couple and probably my favorite like getting into Bethany's story is my dad wanted me to go to Penn State so bad. He really wanted me to be a Penn State student. He's an, a Penn State alum. So on it came to a day where he was like, Jocelyn, you got to apply to more than one college. Like you got to go put in one more application. I sat down at the computer, pulled up Penn State's website, and my brother came in with my acceptance note letter, like, at that moment. <laughs> so I was like, I don't have so to apply bad. anywhere else. I got in. I'm like, I just saved myself three hours on an application, so. <laughs> so, and what was the application? Because I know that it's changed through the years. Um, you came in a year after me, so you came in in 2011. Um were you, were they still asking for the, I know when I got in, when I got in school for the application process, you had to, uh, I think it was in a hundred words or less or 500 words or less, why you should be a Bethanian. Mm -hmm. And it was always, it's always something, even to this point, it stuck with me. I've never, I haven't asked anybody else because I've had some of the, you know, my second generation at Bethany. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had the chance to ask how much it, it, did it change at that point or were they still asking for, if you remember? I, they required an essay of some form. I don't remember what it was about. I can guarantee you I wrote something about either musical theater or horseback riding. It was one of those two. But <laughs> and is that something that, are those two fields something that either one of those, is that what drew you to Bethany? It is. I actually, I went to Bethany because they had a theater major and they had an equine major. And I wanted to kind of transition into equine therapy and work with people with Down syndrome and autism and um, stuff to that degree. And I just ended up straying away from that. I had a very misguided period in my beginning of my sophomore year where I tried to make my own major. Should not have done that. It was, <laughs> I'm not going to say I wasted the semester. I got to try new things but I tried to make a very specific major for myself where I wanted to be an equine journalist. It, no, that was, I limited myself so much trying to go that route, but at least I realized it in one semester. <laughs> so, so you came to Bethany with the intention of being a, like a, a horse therapist. For those that don't know, that is what equine is. And I do know. <laughs> Wine is the is is horses and um that's everything from being a wanting to be a vet to be wanting to ride wanting to um like you said use it for the therapeutic side of things um and then on the other side of that you were looking at the theater department which um was is a very interesting like it's two very <laughs> Yeah. Different. It one is happy. very outside, one is very inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely two passions. I still did minor in theater. I really enjoyed the theater program there. 
probably my favorite course to this day that I took in college was our lighting design course. I got to do that. And it was just, I got to play with, play with pretty colors for an entire semester. And it was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> so your transition from now, I'm guessing you were a fairly decent student in high school. Uh, yeah, I, I think I did pretty well. A's and B's. I was in the uh, in a good range. <laughs> so was there any issue transitioning to Bethany being a, you know, being on your own, being that you have more free time, you don't have that, you know, what is it, 8, 8 a.m. to 3, most high schools or 8 a.m. to 2, whatever it is, you're not in school for that length of time. It's 50 minutes here, 50 minutes there. Um, it I had a lot of test anxiety in high school. Like I had real issues with, I would know the material front ways and backs and you put a test in front of me and I just failed miserably. Something about college did give me an opportunity to try out. There was less pressure I felt like, which I think a lot of people feel more pressure. So I might be in an odd group with that, but um, I didn't feel as much pressure on the tests. And I had a lot of, uh, help from teachers just teachers seemed more engaging I do well with hands-on learning so I still struggled with math and science those are I'm an English brain 100% so I still struggled with math and science I did go to tutoring a little bit mostly before finals I would go to tutoring now was that through the through the learning center was that through like specific classes had um, tutors and lab and pro like lab for the labs. I know science, they had lab proctors left and right that you could find. Yeah. It was a bit of a mixture. I think like I was, I'm pretty sure I went to the learning center before finals for math and science courses, just to kind of solidify anything that I was, uh, a little off on. Mm -hmm. But, uh, for the most part, I was very lucky in that I was able to make friends in classes a lot and do study groups a good bit. Now, and that helped you. The group, the group studying was a little bit easier than a, say, a one-on-one -on -one or maybe being by yourself. Yeah. And that's, it's about being disciplined in your studying too. Honestly, the best way I found to stay disciplined with reading chapters and stuff is I'd go to the gym and I'd read on the treadmill. And that was a really good way to keep my feet moving and stay active, but still do schoolwork. So you brought up that uh, your sophomore year, you decided to uh, go rogue agent <laughs> Bethany, rogue bison basically, and create your your major. It's gonna be the major of Jocelyn. Oh yeah, it was gonna be amazing. I was very proud of it until I realized that I put myself in such a little niche box. <laughs> so then, but you stayed in one of that, one of those niche that you, the niches I guess you stayed in is that you wanted to be an equestrian journalist and you kind of dropped the just being equestrian and moved into communications, which gives you the opportunity to do journalism and whatnot. Uh, why that, why the jump? So other than, other than creating your own major that made you realize, Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I honestly, the comm courses just resonated so well with me. So that I made the final switch to communications second semester, sophomore year. I officially took up the communications major. And fun fact, I actually, I'm not broadcast or digital track. I went, or no, I did go digital track. What? Because I was just like, I sucked with computers. I was so bad with technology. So I went away from the things I was good at and took yeah. up track for the thing that I sucked at. And now I do all tech stuff all day. <laughs> but I went communications for two reasons, but I actually really liked how many things I got to dip my toes into. I got to try so much, so many options. And I just, the more I was at college, the more I was experiencing, the more I was realizing I did not have a clue what I wanted to do yet. Yeah. And yeah, through the comm classes, I was able to take that vision and just narrow, narrow, narrow until I found something that really resonated with me, which was broadcast. <laughs> well, and, and you did, you know, you were a, you were the behind the, you were the behind the scenes lady. You were the sound lady. You were, I, I, I'm, I know I watched you run a camera. I know I watched you run a bunch of line or cables. Um, <laughs> I know I watched you grip. Mm -hmm. Um you were, you were involved in radio. You were both on the technical side of it and the broadcasting side of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, you, I mean, you really involved yourself in almost every aspect you possibly could. Yeah. And that was the best possible thing that I could have done. And I highly recommend it. Get your hands on as much as you can. Like that was just, it, it let me experience so much and learn so much to the point where when I did get a job in the industry, even though two years later, at least things weren't foreign. Everything kind of had that familiarity that I was able to latch on to it a lot faster. Well, and, you know, I bring up, I, I said all of these things that Jocelyn does. And one of the reasons I know this is uh, we happened to do a show together that was, in my opinion, and Eric Sprouse will probably watch this and be so heartbroken that I'm going to say this, but the Halloween special, the, the, the Halloween movie marathon that we shot an entire thing of, and then it wasn't there anymore. It just didn't record. It was bad. And I just, the biggest thing I think I remember about that is that we called it the Halloween movie horror a -thon, and you had to enunciate that so clearly. And, you know, <laughs> for those that were involved in that or anybody that watched it, um, you can progressively see that saying horror a -thon was progressively becoming a problem for certain <laughs> people that were expected to speak. So... <laughs> Um, Eric, I'm sorry. It was terrible. You know, it so was much a great fun. time. I had a blast. <laughs> Jocelyn, I'm sure you had it. The food was great the first day. The second day, <laughs> not, not so much. But like, um, so let's go so through. For those that don't know, it was a, we did, I don't know, what was it? Seven movies, eight movies? It was something like that. It was over, it was six or more, six or six or seven or something. And Jocelyn and I hosted, we were the people that you would go to a commercial break and we would say some goofy stuff. Well, I would say some goofy stuff. Jocelyn had a had her clipboard and was ready to go and knew what she was doing. <laughs> I didn't do all that. Um, but we had like the cameras in old main, like we had cam oh the night vision cameras the throughout. Tower. Yeah, uh, Taylor went up in the tower. That was mm -hmm. fun. So, we had the medium on set. Oh, the medium who actually got rid of Sarah. No, <laughs> didn't get rid she of. She got rid of Sarah. Medium. That medium again, Eric. Eric will have to chime in on that. I'm not allowed to speak on what happened with the medium because I'm pretty <laughs> sure I've gotten a lot of trouble for making her <laughs> think there was a ghost in 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 commencement. Oh. There was, there's, I'm sure there's a ghost in commencement. It's an old building. <laughs> but so not only did we do stuff like that, but we were also involved in, you know, Jocelyn was one of those people that was very valuable to somebody like me in learning how to be a sports broadcaster because I talked about the things that I saw and didn't really plan and Jocelyn was the opposite. It was a plan of how we're going to talk, what we're going to talk about. This is when we're going to do it. This is how. And I don't know if that, I guess we'll find out in the second part of this, if that works into your job. But, you know, I wasn't the easiest to deal with, but she was, you know, th this is Katie Valone's level lady here. She was behind <laughs> the scenes, in front of the scenes. Um, I needed bullet points. I didn't know sports yet. I needed to have my bullets. Um, my dad. So your me favorite while I was takeaway talking. from your time as a communications major, if there's one project or anything that you'd like to talk about that you remember, or situation, person, anybody? Oh, gosh, there was actually, there was so much that I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed. Um, I do remember, oh, I'm trying to remember who all it was with. Heather, definitely Heather. Oh, I am blanking on everyone's names. This is killing me. Well, which one me, was it? Me, Heather, who was a year younger than me. And I'm forgetting a fine new girl whose name I'm... Kristen Ewing. I think so, yeah. We did a uh, project at one point that was... It's actually still on YouTube. It has a lot of views. If you look up My Bethany Life... The movie. Yeah, that little clip, My Bethany Life on YouTube. Um, That was just a fun project to put together. I remember just tinkering around in the comm TV department and trying to make my own clips and stuff. That was just fun. I tried to do one of those videos where you layer your voice acapella. 
And I did that for like a week. I just sat in that room trying to get it right. And I eventually was like, no, this, I got the chorus sounding halfway decent. And I was like, I don't know how people do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you can call that a project since it was kind of a failed experiment, but I remember doing that for a week. It was a learning experience. It was. I learned a lot about the editing software because I tried everything in the software on that video. <laughs> well, and, and that's a good place because we're, we, can, we can roll into the editing side of things and then going into comps. I do have to send it to KJ, Karen Dunn with Maple Shades Outdoors. Um, if you haven't yet, get on YouTube, subscribe and like his channel. It's Maple Shades Outdoor, or yeah, Maple Shade Outdoors, sorry. And uh, follow him on Instagram, same thing. Uh, but without further ado, KJ, get hats and crewnecks because we all want them. But yes, KJ, take it away. What's going on, everybody? This is Kieran Dunn, founder of Maple Shade Outdoors. You're currently watching Dingo Talk with my man, Carlo. If you're anything like me and you're really enjoying this content, you should like and subscribe his page. You, while you're on YouTube, you should probably just head over and like and subscribe Maple Shade Outdoors. Check out our page. Enjoy some videos, some outdoor content. You might as well hop on Instagram, Facebook, follow us, Maple Shade Outdoors. Now that's enough about me. I'm trying to get back and watch the rest of Dingo Talk. So I'll talk to y'all later. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. Sorry, my eye got itchy. Ooh. Um. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. I am Carla Guadalupe. That's Jocelyn Nelson, class of 2015. Uh, we left off with Jocelyn talking about some of the experiences that she had at Bethany. Uh, is there anything else that we, we maybe we left off that you wanted to come back to and, and wrap up before we get into this terrible <laughs> monster of a thing that is comps? Um, probably the only thing I would have wanted to do is send out a thank you to my professors and stuff. I really did connect with the communications professors. It's a big reason I went for and enjoyed the major as much as I did. And um, I'm including Mr. Dumas in that. He was a huge influence on my career there and helping me prepare for beyond that. Uh, Professor Sprouse, I really wish I'd have had more than one year with him. He was a big influence and just gave me a lot of confidence. Dr. Smith also was like, it, it was almost like he broke down my confidence a little bit at first, but it was because he challenged me and it really helped me improve from there on in. So just a big thank you to all of them. Those are just the three that I thought of off the top of my head as being extra influential. <laughs> well, and if you think about it, that if, we, if you went, if you came back today, that department uh, of the people that you mentioned, none of them are there. Uh, yeah. You know, Dr. Sutherland's the only one riding out the long haul. Um, I don't remember, uh, I don't know, I don't even know if it's Professor Clancy or Dr. Clancy, um, but I don't remember that side. I, I think that position had a couple different people throughout our time, I would say. Um, and, you know, Sprouse position even, because they... Uh, after you left, that's when they brought in uh, John Griner, um, and I know he did some work after Sprouse left. Um, and now, you know, Emmy's now no longer with the college. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Doctor Sutherland, he's still still trooping on down, and and uh, he's I, I mean, in the radio. like when I worked at the radio department, we talked a good bit. Yeah, and and, and Doctor Sutherland's a great guy. It's a, you know, the department's in in good hands and and they now have a guy who I still haven't and this is you know Jocelyn I have to do this every episode uh, it's a shameless plug to get somebody on and this guy I don't know if he watches maybe somebody will tell him I, I mentioned him uh, Dr. Delulius I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about him um, I, and <clears throat> excuse me the people that I've talked to it's He's Jason Smith and Eric Sprouse kind right. of right. both of them put into a professor. Um, that, and they were pretty uh, opposite. Know. That could be interesting. And that, you know, very, very from what I've heard, very laid back, but also very like, well, no, that's not what it is. And 
Um, you know, Jason, I'll, I will, you know, Jason and I had Jason Smith, Dr. Jason Smith and I had a lot of uh, ups and downs in none of them had to do with me trying to say that he was wrong because that guy was a walking encyclopedia, if nothing else, uh, yeah. the knowledge that he had. Yeah. Um, and I feel that way about Eric Sprouse and I feel that way about um ME, Professor Gamble, I, I think that they all at that point had their own, you know, Sprouse was very theatrical and TV and let's make this this. And Jason was very, this is, this is the education side of communications. You need to know theories and, and you need to be able to, like this, be able to utilize them. And ME was the marketing and uh, business approach to things. Marketing, the whole department was just very well stacked in the years that I was getting my degree. You had so many different ways of looking at things. And I'm one of those people that if you're teaching me something a certain way and I can't get it, I'm just not going to get it. I need to hear it put, to, put in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice having that wide variety of professors that okay, Dr. Sutherland's trying to tell me something. He's trying to teach me something, but it's just not getting through. I could go to Dr. Smith and be like, what is he talking about? And the way Dr. Smith might explain it helped. So we, we get through, you get through two more years. Oh, a year and a half, I guess it would have been. No, two, two years. No, two and a half, because my second, so second semester sophomore year was when I got into Tom. So... We get to the, the, the test, the test, and there's a week before the test where the, it's the studying. And for those people, I, I didn't know what really studying was. I mean, I had studied, but studying for comps, in my opinion, completely different than anything you've ever done because it really matters. <clears throat> it really matters. It is... It's a test that can stop you from walking across the stage and, ha and being handed a piece of paper that you worked your ass off for. Um, so you, you talked about your test anxiety. Mm -hmm. How did you fare with comps? I actually fared really well. It was not easy, but I, I knew what I had to do. I am a very organized person now. That was one of the ways I beat my test anxiety was to get super organized. And I showed you my giant whiteboard that I still work off of that I'm doing stuff on in the living room right now. That was a huge part of me getting through comps. I think you were in my, no, you weren't in my study group, but um, in no, my- On the next year. <clears throat> yeah, in my study group, we had my giant whiteboard and we planned out what we were going to do we had i had a stack of flashcards like that high um and i think i had we had a pretty rotating study group it was me chris 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 white i believe and christian rice i think the three of us were the core group in my study group and other people were just rotating in and out based on because they knew what topic we were on that day because it was on my giant whiteboard in phillips hall all the time <laughs> But um, yeah, if, it, if we hit a topic that they wanted to join in on, the rest of our entire class would come in on that day and we'd work on the topic together. Um, quiz each other, quiz each other, quiz each other. That was the biggest thing. <laughs> I take breaks. If, if there is somebody who's going to take comps watching this right now, take a break. I did not take a break and I cried a lot. <laughs> there were tears. <laughs> You know, we all had them. We've all, one way or another, good or bad, Bethany College has given everybody that's watching one tier, maybe two. I have a friend in the room that would tell you, put two tiers in a bucket and you can finish it, whoever is out there. Um, so we'll fast forward. You know, you get through the studying. You get through, excuse me, the written mm -hmm. walk into your day of worlds go through you're walking out what's the feeling after they've handed you the pen you've passed you know that you're done but you're not done because you still got a week where you get to just relax 
Um, but what's the feeling walking out? Um, I guess I'm backtracking a little bit, but going into the orals, I was pretty dang confident and you kind of, you have to go in confident. I knew the two things I wanted to talk about. We talked about them. Honestly, when I went in, they said it wasn't even really a problem, but I was still like, but no, I can do it better. Let me tell, let me say it better. <laughs> so, um, trying to get that. <laughs> yeah. Give me the extra points. But, uh, but yeah, um, I felt confident pretty much the whole way through something that was just kind of a fun moment. Uh, Kayla McQuillan, if you're watching, Kayla was my best friend, uh, my senior year and stuff. And I, she wasn't supposed to be able to make my comp, my oral comps when I walked out. Knew my parents were outside, knew I had a couple, handful of people outside, and then I heard Kayla on the bullhorn when I was waiting to hear the results, and I was like, yes, I, I took long enough that she showed up. So, because it is, at the end, you want all your best friends there. You oh, want your friends waiting outside the door, and she was the only one that was missing, so it was so cool hearing her voice on the bullhorn, but um, it was awesome. When I walked out and everyone was there, my mom was passing out a mimosa to somebody, and it was great. <laughs> I believe I was there. I got a mimosa that day. I get a mimosa. <laughs> I got a mimosa. Uh, you know, I never, I never miss a comp. At that point, I, I missed a lot of comps since, but like, I never missed a comp, especially a calm comp, because those parents were always fond of here, have a beer, here, have a drink, let's go. They're graduating. Um, like that's all fun, but there's no better feeling than that finalness to you did it you finished college you completed it you passed everything just kind of fits into place and then everyone who you want to be there is just right there for you and well, it's a great I'm sure with you being as organized as you were you didn't have the problem of you the library hounding you to turn in the final your senior project or that had already been done yeah. checked off you you <laughs> went into this this that last week of just being able to enjoy all the different things um, and a different, it's a different Bethany than it was when you were here, that you were mm -hmm. walking out of a Bethany that has a bar. Um, there's a couple more, there's just more, we're not in COVID. Let's just, yeah. we're not in <laughs> COVID. I mean, we're, we're able to be out. It's, it's that springtime. You're, we could go out to dinner afterwards. <laughs> so that last week, I always, I always like to just touch on that with people just kind of relaxing because you don't have to go to class. Everybody else has to wake up, go to class and you, you yeah. No, it was Not just last week, like fun for you. celebration. Like we had the whole senior week thing. I think we went to Kennywood. We did a ropes course and like, we just had so much fun. It was a vacation that was just fantastic. So you graduate. You don't get in. For those of you watching, I'm going to spoil it, but there's a surprise at the end of the spoil. She doesn't get a communications job right away. It takes her two years. But in those two years, she does something that um, I'll say goes back to her journalism side. It probably it, it stays in the writing aspect and I'll let her take it away. So in those two years, what did you do? So I was working at a factory and I was doing administrative work with numbers. We have established I hate numbers. I, I, it was killing me. So I started learning how to at least do my work fast. And then I would think about, and I, my boss isn't a friend on Facebook, so she won't see this. I spent half my work day writing a book because I, I love reading fantasy. I love reading fiction. I love creative writing, even though my creative writing teacher at Bethany said I was not very good. But <laughs> I you went published on, a book, I, so yeah, I published a book. So it's almost three hundred pages. And for those of you, who don't know, she brought up earlier in this segment of uh, about the whiteboard that she showed me. There is a new project that she is working on, so be on the lookout. There will be uh, another book coming from Jocelyn. And the name, the title of the book is. Uh, so the title I've written is Ellen Pass. And you can and get that on. Amazon uh, Kindle. So everybody go right now to Amazon Kindle. Look up her name. <laughs> First book. It is definitely a first time book, but if you like elemental magic and just fun stuff like that, it's a fun. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so you get into your, you you you're working a factory job. You're working with numbers. I believe you start off at Channel 9 over in Studio. Yeah, 
WTOV9 Ohio, Ohio in Steubenville. I lived in Weirton because I love West Virginia. My heart's in West Virginia. But um, I worked in Steubenville, Ohio. I, so again, I guess I'm kind of talking to if you're looking to get out of college and into your field, prepare. I spent those two years banking money so that when I hit a job that was offered to me and it was nine fifty an hour and that made my head want to explode, I had the financial base all prepared and I was able to take that job as a master control op. So if you don't know what a master control op is, they basically, I was running three TV stations, just making sure everything was running smoothly. So you make sure that everything is airing as it should. There's no going to black. If there's a lot of sporting events, they're the one who hits the button to roll the commercial break. So it's that kind of stuff. Um, I went from there to being a director at WTOB9 loved directing. I had a phenomenal crew that I'm still really close with. We played Dungeons and Dragons together here. So I, I made a really solid base in Ohio. I love my Ohio crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and you say you love them as if you don't work with them anymore. I do not. I moved, actually, I don't know if you know this. I had an in-between station. I moved to Altoona, West Virginia, or Altoona, Pennsylvania. For a, for a year, right? Yep. I worked for a little over a year there as a newscast producer. I produced the evening news. So I was the one who was writing some of the stories and uh, talking with reporters in the field. And I gained a ton of experience in that year. That year was jam-packed with getting experience. And then I got a new job in an entirely new department that's being created and has been in the works in KDKA right now. So uh, we do a streaming service for KDKA News. It's CBSN Pittsburgh. There's only 10 CBSN stations right now that are 24-7 news streams. So I'm not going to get too, too much into it. You can find, I will plug, you can find us on the CBS local app on the KDKA website or on streaming services like Amazon, Roku, Fire Stick, uh, Pluto TV. So that's just for if you decide to check it out. But yeah, it's a 24 seven streaming service and we're really building from the ground up. There are times when it's frustrating, it's something entirely new, but it's exciting. There's so much possibilities in a 24 seven stream. Like that. Absolutely. I mean the jobs that you're going to be able to create for people that maybe that's where they want to go is mm -hmm. so, all right. So we'll all be on the lookout for that as well. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, we're going to, I have two questions that I normally wrap this up with. Um, and my, most of my guests, there's a reason there's two and not just the one because they're normally athletes, so I can ask them why they went to a Division three school. So, Jocelyn, why Bethany College? Like, if somebody out there is watching and they – maybe they want to be an equestrian journalist because <laughs> you laid the groundwork and you know that, that catalog's up there. Someone you should pull that catalog right now. I will give you the binder specific against. But um, if you're looking at Bethany – the best thing that I can give it is opportunity. And that's, I am a huge advocate for finding opportunities and running with it. And Bethany lets you get hands on with so many things that it helps you find your passion in a very unique way that I haven't heard people talk about much with other colleges, but I hear it with Bethany and I experienced it with Bethany where you really get to try so many different things and experience so much and pick out, yes, that's what I want to do. So I appreciated the variety and the hands-on and just how personal the professors were with wanting to help you find that passion. Well, I wanted to say thank you for being on the show. <laughs> I will, uh, there's there's a couple bit, bits of news that I got to release now, because we got <laughs> to that point. Um, <clears throat> Today we're going to introduce, be the first time uh, we're doing this, uh, Jack Hoffman, who was on last week's episode. Uh, we brought him back, and he's going to do a couple segments at the end of some episodes. Uh, it's Jack. It's called Jack's Facts, history from his point of view. It'll be with him and the Leonardo DiCaprio of Bethany College himself. Well, Bethany, the town of Bethany. I don't want Bethany College. Ooh, shouldn't say that. <laughs> 
He's not from Bethany College. He's the town of Bethany's Leonardo DiCaprio. Harry Chambers will be interviewing him. Uh, so I'm going to send that to, I'm going to send it to Harry, who's going to send it to Harry. And that's how this episode's going to end because we're still figuring out where to put all, the, all of this. Um, but Jocelyn, again, thank you for being on the show. Um, I, we've ta- we talked a long time ago about once I got Zoom, you were, you were on my list of people. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I really appreciate having you on. It's great to talk to you. Uh, but without further ado, Harry Chambers, go ahead and talk. Tell us what's Jack's fact. 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 <laughs> Jack's facts. That's right. We're words, people. Hey, Go ahead, Harry. Harry Chambers. We're live from the wood shop at the back of Chambers General Store. Uh, happy to be here with uh, Jack Hoffman. He's a lifelong family friend and one of the oldest members of the Bethany community. He knows all the facts, the fiction, what the legends are, and what the truth really is. So, Jack and I are just going to kind of shoot the breeze a little bit, talk about the history of Bethany, and hopefully uh, catch ourselves on Bingo Talk one night. So Jack, how, how did you all end up in bed? My dad came here in 1933 when he was married. He was already working here, but he was commuting to West Virginia for the first six years, I think. Uh, because he started a barbershop in 1927. The barbershop here in town? Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's a picture of the front of the barbershop, as many historians remember it. Um, had my first haircut at that barbershop. My mother was talking about that the other day. When I went up the steps, I looked like a little blonde-haired girl. And I came down the steps as a, as a little blonde-haired baby boy. So we were good. He did a lot of, he did a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and this picture of Jack's dad, Jimmy Hoffman. Can we see the down a little bit? There we go. Talking to the uh, Reverend, talking to the Reverend Allen, who was the minister here at the Bethany Memorial Church for most of my youth and my adult life. So, when did your dad retire, Jack? Oh, okay, fifty-seven years. I uh, don't know what year that was. It was after I. It was probably about 79. Okay. You've just watched another exciting episode of Dingo Talk, recorded in the secret lair deep in the hills of Bethany, West Virginia. Let me give a shout out to my man Don over at Maple Shade Outdoor. He got some great, he's got some great stuff going on over there on YouTube and Instagram. Please make sure you check him out. Also, now available as promised, we have the second edition Bethany, West Virginia, Mushroom Capital of the World t-shirts and our Chambers General Store. If we don't have it, you don't need it t-shirts. And avail- available in all sizes. So, make sure you stop by the store for a t-shirt, breakfast sandwich, or sausage biscuits and gravy. And make sure to check out the- You wanna know by now? Check out the-